Uh, well, first of all, thanks everyone to be here in this room and uh, for here for conversational interface talk. Uh, I'll quickly go through uh, my own introduction first. Uh, my name is Arijit. I'm um, a Drupaler for past six, in fact, now seven years. Started with Drupal 6 and uh, I've seen the journey till Drupal 8 so far. Um, I am, uh, I can be searched as a photos lab. You put the string in Google and you'll find me over Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Drupal, everywhere. A uh, quick introduction about my company. Um, I work for Sregen Technologies. It's uh, one of the largest uh, Drupal pure play shops in India and in fact Asia. We have got presence over almost every continent here right now. And uh, it's uh, more than 175 plus team, most of them Drupalers. Uh, I won't take much time into the introduction. Let's uh, get started with the topic. We already know what user interface is and why it is required. Um, machine doesn't speak English and we don't speak binary, so we need an interface. Before we get into conversational user interfaces, let's talk about the current most and most common and most used um, user interfaces, CLI and GUI. Now, the first one, um, CLI, command line interface, is almost 50 years old and yet it looks almost the same as it looked in 1960s. Very few changes have come in here, except for there are a lot many more commands now. We can do much more with the interface. But uh, the way it looks, the way it feels, it's uh, the same. You just need a keyboard, you put in commands, you should know the commands, and you can do whatever you want to. Now, this is a very famous interface. Everyone uses it, the developers especially. But um, it has got a downside to it. You need to know the commands. You need to know uh, what all it can be, uh, why, what all it can do. You need to know how to get the help. Either you need a reference sheet with you, or sometimes you need to Google for commands. It is difficult for a common person who is not exactly a developer but wants to use a computer. It is difficult, but yeah, nothing can be done. We say deal with it, the developers. Now to counter this problem and make it accessible, the computer accessible to most of the people, uh, GUI was launched. And now, just talking about the evolution of GUI, this is probably the first computer that actually had the graphic elements. This is Alto Computer, made in 1973 by Xerox. Now, very few people know that the graphic user interface was actually conceived and developed by Xerox much before Windows and Mac actually came into the picture. In late 1960s, early 1970s, Xerox as a company thought that there are a lot many advancements happening in the computer field and their current business of creating photocopy machines and all that stuff is not going to sustain for a long time, though it did. Now, they put up a small team and uh, put in huge investments to create some new products for the market. One was laser printer that they introduced. The other one was this computer. Now, the most uh, what they thought with this uh, computer was that uh, it can go to homes. It had some graphic elements. You could paint. There were windows, and the major invention of this computer was a mouse, a three-button mouse. This was introduced in 1973, but in, oh sorry, before we go, um, there's another slide. Um, so with this computer, a paradigm was launched, that is WIMP, Windows icons, menus, and pointers. Why this is important, we'll see in the next few slides. In 1984, the first Apple Mac was launched. It was a monochrome. And within a year, it was eclipsed by Windows 1.01. The benefit that Windows provided was, unlike the Mac, which was a monochrome, it had 8-bit colors, and it became instant hit among many. In 1987, Apple Mac came out with better icons, better screen, some colors, then Windows 95 and 98, again, there was improve improvement in navigation. 
there was improvement in icons and everything. In 2001, Windows XP was launched and it wasn't very different than Windows 98 except the way it looked and feel. Um, the icons were better, the menu bar was better, there were better colors. How to use it, the navigation remained the same. Even how you change the wallpaper and put up the screensaver, it remained the same. But it looked much better and it was one of the most successful windows at that time. Now, in 2000, Apple Mac came into the scene. In 2007, Windows Vista. Now, Windows Vista was not a product that was successful. It uh, actually failed in the market. But one thing that it introduced was a new set of graphics and which were actually quite different than what was there in the market at that time. The icons were better. There was transparent and transparent kind of a feel which looked pretty good, but they required so heavy processing that the performance of Windows Vista wasn't good. However, in 2007 itself, there was another revolution in the market and that was introduction of iPhone. Before 2007, there were mobiles. We all were using them, uh, mostly Nokia, big bulky sets. It had uh, a lot of keys, a few games, mostly it was monochrome. Uh, even if there were colors, those were pixelated colors. Now, when iPhone came into the market, there was another way to interact with the, um, with the machine. It was gestures. You could click, you could swipe. This looked good, it felt good, and it was pretty easy to use. Soon after, there was iPad which provided another kind of experience. It was a bigger screen, it was touch, it was something in between you know, phone and a desktop. With this uh, touch and gestures, there was another thing that came into being, not exactly came into being, but people started explore exploring it more. That was NUI, or Natural User Interface. Now, if you see in this picture, which is quite small though, um, there is a bookshelf and some books in it. Now this is just a emulation of what you see physically in your rooms, a bookshelf. But it becomes very easy and intuitive when you use it in your iPhones or iPads. In 2012, Windows 8 came into being with lot many icons and it was probably more confusing than they thought. In 2013, um, iPhone, another version of iPhone was launched, the first one of which a lot of us have in our pockets right now. Then came Windows, uh, another version of Windows 10, and uh, it was a hybrid. It could use touch, it could use pointers and everything. Now with these three slides of uh, evolution that we have just seen, the paradigm has been updated a little. We still have windows, icons, menu and pointers, just the addition is gestures. In last three decades or four decades, we have been able to add a gesture to it. Otherwise, if you see the evolution, all we have been doing so far is improving the icons, improving the navigations, improving the curvature of the screens, all of those, the windows, but essentially the paradigm has remained the same. Now coming back to the problem we are trying to solve that we discussed before starting our talk. There is a computer that understands binary and there is Mr. Bean who doesn't speak English but okay we take it for an example. A human who speaks English and uh, the user interface just comes in and says that let me mediate. Humans you speak English, I'll convert it to binary, and computer, you speak binary, I'll convert it to English. That's all the problem that we are trying to solve. But what exactly is the solution that we are going towards? Now, this is a screenshot of the WGET GUI uh, program. It does nothing. It, we have a command in um, command line interface WGET with lot many options. Now this program just provides a graphic interface for it. There are so many fields. There are text fields, drop downs, buttons, checkboxes, everything. Now 
the way we are evolving our GUI is just making this form a little more beautiful. Rather than gray, make it blue. Um, make these fields a little more sassy. Um, make this form a multi-step form. Make it conditional. You click a checkbox and suddenly you see three more checkboxes. And this is the evolution of GUI that has happened in the last few years. Next evolution could be this. You might have holograms and uh, five years down the line I might not be using this laptop and putting something in the air that would look even better but it is again the icons, the windows and the gestures. Now going back to and not going back to actually coming back to our topic in the process we forgot conversational user interface while we were developing GUI almost it's not a new concept it used to be used in sci-fi movies at a point in time in 1960s 1950s this was supposedly a interface that people were trying to evolve we had command line interface and we were trying to make it talk to the machine in a natural language nlp natural language processing that was growing so was these kind of interfaces but somehow when GUI came in, the investment was less. It was easy to capture the market and everything, so it came um, pretty fast. Now, um, in this state, these devices and these uh, in this interface is actually making a comeback, and in fact, it's making a grand comeback. A few products, which are a good example of uh, uh, CUI. Amazon Echo, Home, Siri, OK Google, I'm sure um, we have used OK Google and Siri. Uh, in Australia, I'm not sure we still have Google Home and Amazon Echo yet, but um, I'm sure everyone knows about it. A bit about them, Google Home and Amazon Echo, those are very small and easy to use machines. They have got only three features, a microphone, a speaker, and an internet connection. That's it. Now, these machines, you can talk to them as humans. For an example, I can talk to Google Home like, hey Google, what's the capital of Australia? It will reply, Canberra. Now I can follow the same question with the contextual question like, what's the weather there? I'm not going to say Canberra now. But the algorithm is smart enough to understand my context and come out with the answer that this is the temperature, or this is the weather there. So those are about the algorithms they are doing. but the bottom line about the interface is that you talk to them like humans. You don't have set uh, commands that you need to follow. They are not set interface that you need to follow. You can just talk to them like we talk to each other. Now, where are we heading with CUI, Google Home, and everything? I'll play a two minute clip here. Ah, I need internet connection, I'm sorry. I'm not going to tell you. see the internet connection here. It's going to take a minute. Um, excuse me, uh, what's the password? Great event. Great event. Is that correct? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Turn it to the pressure. So uh, this is a video of a product, a small video. Uh, I'm not advertising this product, but uh, this is a good video to understand how, where we stand and what we are planning to do in the next few years. There's no video? What? Oh, you're right. It is mom's birthday today. Thanks for reminding me. Isn't there a flower shop on the way to her house? <sighs> Movie night. What should we watch? I really like Kevin Bacon. What's that new one he's in? The new movie starring Kevin Bacon is called Monster Within. It is not available to watch now. Okay, well, Julie really likes romantic dramas. Kevin Bacon is in the romantic drama called Footloose. So what if we could talk to our devices like we normally do with other people? Introducing Vivio, a 
conversational interface technology that can be used with lots of devices and applications. It goes beyond the usual voice commands and whimsical speech-based assistance to make natural dialogues with devices a real thing. Vivio's conversational engine is built on a knowledge graph with more than 100 million smart tags that can identify the essence of what we are talking about. A personal graph that learns our behavioral patterns as we use our devices, then matches things to our interests and a conversational query engine that gleans our intent with speed and accuracy so that our devices are able to keep up with our conversation. Put simply, Vivio understands what we mean. The Bengals kick off at 1 p.m. You're scheduled to be at your mom's birthday lunch today. I will record the game for you. Gives good advice. The florist is on Fifth and Walnut. You have time to pick up flowers after the gym. Calling now. And gets to know us. Footloose is available to watch now. Great. Let's watch it. Hey, hon. Can you grab me some popcorn? You read my mind. Learn more at Vivio.net. Anyways, um, there were two um, concepts in this video. Uh, one was the interface, how we are interacting with it. There is a chat interface and there is a voice recognition interface. The other thing is the engine. And this is one of the things that normally when we read the articles, when we talk and when we perceive CUI, we perceive it something like it's a bot. And the bot needs to be like made, which is not very easy and everything. So let's um, debunk some myths here. Uh, next two or three slides. One, CUI is not exactly a bot. If we read the definitions, bot is a software application that runs automated tasks over the internet, which is a program. A conversational interface is any UI that mimics talking to a human, mostly in natural language. These two are different things. Other thing that normally comes into um, our daily conversation is it needs voice recognition, which is not correct again. There is one example of uh, conversational interface, which is kind of a chat. I'll open a site here, uxchat.me, you can look at it um, yourself as well. Now this site has got nothing but an interface where you can actually talk to a particular program. This is um, some, these are already uh, defined things in there. You just keep on adding some uh, input and it will keep on typing. It will give you options to drive the path of the conversation, what exactly you want to do. Write something, then ask you what else and keep going on. This is also a conversation interface. You don't need a voice recognition system here. More examples, WhatsApp, WeChat, Line, Facebook Messenger, all of these. We are talking to humans, but the interface that we are using, that is conversational interface. It's a no nonsense interface, doesn't have much buttons or something, you just log in, write whatever you want to, and it gets done. And one thing, uh, I came across this article a few days ago. Um, it was, uh, I think, 2016 or 2000, late 2015 article from Business Insider. Uh, they came out with this um, uh, data that messaging apps have surpassed social networks. And uh, one of the things that they stated uh, was the reason was this interface where people are talking to each other, they, there are no buttons, there is a text field, you go and write, and you can write in your natural language. That is one of the reasons of them being very popular. Now let's come to conversational forms. Before we get into the Drupal and Drupal demo, I'm trying to run over it. Um, let's talk about ELISA effect. Now, probably a few people already know about it. The ELISA effect in computer science is the tendency to unconsciously assume computer behavior are analogous to human behaviors. Now, ELISA effect can be achieved with artificial intelligence or just intelligence. We can have just flow charts and create them in a way that it emulates uh, a conversation with a human. 
A very good example of this is Dr. Script. Now, ELISA effect derives its name from ELISA program, which was developed in late 1950s or early 1960s. And that program actually was to uh, create this kind of a perception that you are talking to a, a human while you are talking to a machine. One of the most famous script of that program is the doctor script. It was tested over more than 1,000 people. And uh, almost 50% of them, in the first five minutes, they were fooled that they are actually talking to a human and not a machine. What this uh, uh, program did was just take the input from the user, rephrase it, and put it back. For example, I may go to um, the script and say, hey, I'm not feeling well today. The response I will get is, oh, are you not feeling good today? Then I'll say, I have a headache. Oh, you really have a headache? Now it feels that you are talking to a human, but you are not. So, with all this, um, the idea of showing all this was to get the concept and that get into the demo, how exactly we can make our forms more interactive and maybe produce some kind of ELISA effect. Now there is a module, um, conversation forms, that's still in development and that's why this is not covered by security policy because there is no uh, stable release out yet. There are a few issues, those need to be done. but. Uh, we'll be using this form right now to convert a web form into a conversational interface. Okay. I need to... Uh, this... I need to make it smaller. Okay, it's visible now. <coughs> So this is a simple feedback form created in web form right now. I'm using Drupal 7 here. It asked for a name. It asked for what do you think about conversation forms, suggest some implementation, and there's just a passive field. Now I go to web form. In form settings, I'll find a checkbox. Convert this web form to a conversational form. I save it, I go back to the form and it will show me an interface which looks like a chat. The first question it's going to ask me is, hello there, may I know your name? I put it here, Arijit. Nice to know you Arijit, what is your opinion about CUI? I say seem interesting. I can actually type it as well. I can click it here or I can just put it seem interesting. Yes. Can you suggest any good implementation of CUI? Um, I need to think. Let it be this one. Thanks for your inputs. It was nice talking to you, mate. Cheers. Bye. Uh, type in bye. It will submit the form. I can redirect it just like uh, Drupal web forms or anything and I can see the results, I can just like a simple web form, the way we use it. All we need to do is configure and quickly um, I'll just show you how, what are the options that we can configure in there. In the name, I've got three fields, one is CF questions where I can put in different questions that a user should be presented when he goes into onto the web form. Hi, what is your name? With a pipe, I can provide another option so that every time user goes on this web form, he doesn't see the same question. Hello there, may I know your name? Pipe. Hi, how are you doing today? Before we start, may I know your name, please? I can put up a pattern that the name should not have any numbers. And if there are numbers, I can define an error. Sorry, I assume your name would, won't contain numbers. <coughs> now I go to the second one. Again the three fields. Here I have put in some options. And now I can use a token as well. Good to talk to you, previous answer. 
Now this was the name um, I used. So good to talk to you, Arijit. Bye. Nice to know you, Arijit. What's your opinion about CUI? Now, if you see this comes out as you are doing a conversation with someone, you are just filling out a form, the web form that we use, but the interface is quite different and a little more engaging sometimes. So yeah, we are left with just two minutes, so I close it here. Um, maybe if there are some things that you want to know, we can catch up after, after the tea. Any questions, any quick questions here? Is this module specifically only tied into the web form module or is it? Right now it's only with the module. Um, this is integrating a JS library actually uh, built by Space 10 community. Those guys are based out of Denmark. Uh, it can actually be used on any HTML form. So with Drupal integration right now it's only web form but uh, there is a ticket in the issues uh, where it needs to um, be integrated with form API. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, it is. Um, the path is project slash conversation underscore forms. You can go there and try it out. Well, it is a very dumb form. I'll quickly show it to you. Um, now if I go there, it's just a wrapper over a web form. Whatever I'm typing, that's actually just going in the backend. Um, yeah. Whatever I'm typing in the chat window, that's just filling the form. And once I end, it clicks the submit. That's all it's doing. I've missed it. Uh, the, we have the keynote before yep. about accessibility, so it'd be interesting to try with a, a screen reader. Um, well, that is something that we'll have to try. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. So is the, the question about branching for like, web forms to do additional fields? Uh, not yet. That's uh, one of the issues uh, still pending in the issue queue. Uh, once that's done, we'll have a um, stable release out for this module. Yeah. Any other question? Thanks everyone. We got on time.